was expecting. Well, um, good morning. Up until it's the morning the after, the game. after our two two playoff exit against, against Luton. Disappointed, of course, but at the same time, relieved it's all our. And when I mean by relieved all our, I mean I didn't have that anxiety hanging over my head. I'm sure a lot of us will feel the same this morning. You know what I mean? I, yesterday I was a nervous wreck all day at work. Um, and today I can like go, <sighs> well done lads, honestly. You, you were fucking amazing, you were brilliant. Really, really, really good. Um, but now we can just breathe, relax. We can now straight away, as, as of now, look forward to 2023, 24. <coughs> and now we can see what the owners and stuff are really made of and uh, who they're going to bring in and what the intentions are because it were long periods of this season we've played superb football and we'll be able to tell what the ambitions are what they're going to bring in what they're going to do but as of last night's concerned i just think they were run on an empty i mean them young lads have just they've run their socks off um and you know it was just a game too far you know, I've heard some people say as well, it seemed a very short gap between our game and then playing again on Tuesday. You know, should it have been the other way around, some people say? Should it have been... I don't know. I didn't know. Look, whatever how, how distance there was between each games, I just think Sunderland were... They were just knackered. They, they, were, they were shattered. They give their all at the stadium alight. They give everything. They really, really did. And look, it had to take two set pieces for Luton to score. They didn't get past us from open play. It was two set pieces. They knew our weaknesses. Um, and once again, their goal was a carbon copy from our goal that we let in at the stadium light. And ironically, we keep going on about our height. But it was on the deck when they scored. It was just... I can't understand it, it just seemed to bobble about in that box and once again it was just on one of their foot and bang, 1-0, it was, it was actually practically identical. <coughs> but we're all hoping for the Sunderland comeback at the Stadium Alight. But with a very sort of intimidating atmosphere at Kenilworth Road, you can see a tin pot ground if you want, but there was a good atmosphere there last night, you could tell they were really loud, they were noisy, the crowd's right close to the pitch. Luton were up for it, and there are a bunch of tanks on there. I did see tanks with the T, by the way. You know, there's such a big, physical, bulky side. And we were just... We were just running on an empty. The lads were just... They were just shattered, and they looked, they looked dejected. I mean, Pritchard, when he came off, he looked like... I oh, can't believe this, but honestly, it's now to be ashamed of, lads, what you have done this season. And didn't forget, you have all been on double shifts, because... Players that are injured, Ballard, Bath, Stewart, Alessi, and it's going on and on and on. You know, there's many sides who have hardly any injuries. have not done anywhere near as good as us. I mean, look at the likes of your, your Norwiches, for example, and your Watfords and that. I mean, I was expecting them to really storm the league. You know, but we can just, we can just kick on. Um... I always go for the team. If the team's knocked us out at the at the playoffs, I always want them knocked out. Or why not? <clears throat> so I mean I'm hoping Middlesbrough beat Coventry tonight. And I hope they beat Luton in the final. <coughs> but it also it also seems destined, doesn't it, that it's Luton's time to be in the Premier League. But for some strange reason it just it just does. Sometimes the writing's in the stars before you've even kicked the ball. But it was good to see the Southern fans, they were even applauding than the Luton fans last night. You know, they know. I mean, yes, you kind of help feel disappointed. I mean, that's just normal. But they really did appreciate what they've done. They were applauding the team. And even on social media, there was none of this that was shite, that was bollocks, blah, 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 blah. Because they can it. For what the team's done, they really, they really can it. 
Um, it was. We tried everything that we could have tried yesterday. We really did, but Luton would just. They just closed the door every single time. There was just no way through. We didn't have that pass and movement like what we have been doing. I said there's just no ed energy there from the lads. There wasn't the movement off the ball. Um, we were lucky if we'd strung about five or six passes together and then we tried to go forward. They were just shunting us out, shunting us out constantly all the time. And their game plan against us worked 100%. And the best team won on the night. Without, without, you can't argue with that. Same as the best team won at the stadium of light. But I'm going to sit back and watch the playoff final second leg between Middlesbrough and Coventry. I know the Champions League finals on, but that's overrated, isn't it, really? And I'm going to sit and I'm going to be able to relax and watch that second leg playoff. Because yesterday I was torture. I, think, I, didn't, I didn't even eat my fucking tea. I was that bad with my anxiety and my excitement and my nerves and that and it's like I oh, didn't have that now. We can we can just have a breather for a few months and just uh, reflect. And if you want to pick me up, if anybody's got the recording of Sunderland against uh, Wickham final, when we beat them in the playoff, stick it on, watch the whole game and that gives you a lift. I'll watch quite a few of the games while we've played superb this season. So the better team won last night. Sunderland gave it all, <clears throat> but the energy levels were just they were flat, and I can't I can't blame them really. It's you know it's just been such a shame, and I just hope the owners learn the lesson and realise how important it is to have strength in depth. You know it's all right having at the beginning of the season eleven players, eleven really strong players, but you're gonna get injuries. It's gonna happen. It's a physical league. And we need to get cover. We need to cover the likes of when say Stewart or whoever is injured. We just need to have cover, especially as well at the back. Um, when we've got virtually nothing. You know, in height especially, in bulkiness. You know, we're a, we're a sitting target for big teams. And they need to address that, the owners. And surely you think they'd know, wouldn't you? They need to address it. You know, let's get plenty back up. If we've got injuries, it's all right. We've got a few ten-foot players in the on the bench we can fetch on. You know, like, we, we just need we need backup because yesterday, when, you know, suddenly we were trying to attack Luton. It was just trying to hit a sword against a, a force field, a shield. It was just coming back on us all the time. We tried to go forward, and it was just repelling back, repelling back. And um, you know, going to be watching the space very carefully and see what the owners do. But can't emphasise enough the need to get strength and in depth. So there we go. I'm not too disappointed. Um, I'm just now cracking on looking forward to next season. Looking forward to news headlines and see what we're what we're gonna be doing. And of course we can now take a nice deep breath and relax and now we can watch the two teams Middlesbrough and Coventry suffer in their anxieties and excitements and nerves tonight when we can sit back and relax and watch it. Oh, there's a job coming through. Oh, picking up Broadmoor from um, number 12 Ford. Okay, catch you later. Toodaloo.